Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. This is another installment in my Ranch Port series, a weekend series which um, either covers topics that don't have anything to do with Old Norse or that involve such personal opinions that I don't think that I ought to post them as part of my regular updates during the week. And uh, this weekend I'm talking to you about something I have happily come to be associated with over many years and that's cowboy hats. Now, of course, for many people, the word Stetson is synonymous with cowboy hat, just as Kleenex is associated with facial tissue or, or synonymous with facial tissue. Uh, for people in a lot of dialect areas, Coke is synonymous with uh, any sort of carbonated soda, etc. And there is justice in that. Uh, John B. Stetson, that is the original cowboy hat. But uh, I think there are other companies that make uh, very good hats too. Resist all in Texas makes an excellent hat. I wear a lot of Resist all. Uh, my grandfather, actually, I think was more fond of Resist all than of Stetson. Uh, I don't have that that preference. Um, Saratelli in Texas, a, a sort of smaller company, actually has made some good hats uh, for me. And then there are local uh, companies that hand make cowboy hats, actually, that are very good. Uh, my favorite is Colorado Mountain Hat Company in Fair Play, Colorado. Uh, they make some, some really extraordinary hats. It's all custom fit to the exact shape of your head. Uh, I have been measured for one, but I have never been able to drop the thousands of dollars that it would take to get the hat that I want. So uh, I admire from afar. Let me tell you a little bit about cowboy hats if you've ever uh, wondered about them or, or been curious perhaps about getting a good one. I think you can probably get a cheap one that's probably made of plastic of some kind for five bucks at a, at a Hobby Lobby, uh, especially around Halloween. But the good ones, I'd be a little suspicious of a hat that wasn't costing me almost 200 bucks. And of course, I'm a little bit, a little bit of a chauvinist here. I mean, I, I, I have my, my, my high standards. Uh, I prefer, of course, fur felt hats. I don't like straw hats. Um, I mean, I've had some okay straw hats. It's just not the same. Um, you might worry that the fur felt hats are, are too warm in the summertime. They really are not. Um, I, I, I might not wear a black one in the middle of summer, but uh, they actually keep your head feeling the same temperature as the rest of you feels, so it doesn't make a difference. Um, one thing to note, if you go to the store and you pick up uh, a hat at, say, uh, you know, whatever store nearby uh, has, has uh, uh, cowboy hats, um, I have some favorite local stores. Um, my very favorite is actually Martindale's in Laramie, Wyoming. Um, but, of course, you can go to, like, a boot barn and a lot of different places. Um, what you're going to see, so here's, a, here's one of my resist dolls. Uh, there is a... Uh, you probably can't see it because this is black. Let me pull out the Stetson. You might be able to see this. Uh, there are uh, four X's here, and a lot of people, when they first uh, see a cowboy hat, uh, especially if they're looking at buying one, they assume that's a size. That does not mean, like, extra, 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 extra large. The X actually indicates the uh, quality of the felt. So, um... You could have a, a 1X that would be uh, pretty plain quality up to, I think Stetson makes the El Presidente, which uh, I don't have internet anywhere on this ranch, but um, you know you can check me on this. I think it's 100X or maybe 1,000X. It's something pretty ludicrous. Uh, personally, I like a 4X or a 6X. Uh, almost all of my hats are that, except for a couple of 2Xs that I inherited uh, from Papa, my, my grandfather. Uh, the reason I prefer uh, 4X or better is, is rain resistance. So actually the fur felt hats are very good for keeping uh, uh, water off of you. Um, if it's just totally drenching, you know, a, a Houston kind of rainstorm, uh, they may not hold up so well. But for the amount of rain that we get in Colorado or Wyoming, it's utterly sufficient. Uh, yeah, so I like the fur felt. The, those X's indicate uh, quality. I think in straw hats, it's something similar with, with the X's indicating the quality of straw. Um, I've never bought a straw hat, so I, I don't know. Um, I, I just don't look at them. 
uh, actual sizes are indicated in uh, numbers. So for example, I'm a seven and three eighths. Um, I think that they go in uh, roughly like 16th of an inch increments. So the next one down for me is seven and a quarter, then there's seven and an eighth. The next one up for me is like seven and a half, then there's seven and, and five eighths, I think. Um, so it, it, those are the actual increments. Uh, the, the X's indicate quality, not size, common beginner's mistake. Um, in terms of what a hat means, you know, sometimes I'm asked that. Um, th these are uncommon garment choices in some parts of the world that I run in. I mean, I taught at UCLA for three years, I taught at Berkeley for two years, and I definitely could not get away with wearing a cowboy hat in either place. Uh, sometimes when it was raining, I would wear one as an umbrella, but huh, you want to talk about places that are tolerant of other cultures, they're not tolerant of cowboy culture. <laughs> so a lot of insults. Um, but uh, so, you know, obviously I'm not going to wear a hat in a place where it's just going to get made fun of. Uh, contra Chris Ledoux. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what the point is. In, in Colorado, that's really just Boulder. Uh, I wear a cowboy hat in Denver pretty frequently, and if I'm not, like, in the mall, you know, <laughs> nobody notices. Um, uh, cowboys in Denver are not an uncommon sight, uh, but Boulder is a place where you can definitely get made fun of, um, you know. So, and I always feel like the honor of my grandfather is on the line, so I just prefer not to put myself in that provoked position. Uh, but why do I wear it in the first place? Uh, a big part of it is as a tribute to him. It was uh, his daily wear. Uh, he had this big um, uh, rack of elk horns above his door. So when you uh, left the house, you passed immediately under this huge rack. Uh, I have it. I actually don't have a place where it fits because it's so huge. Um, but he would, he had a, a different hat on a different time, on each different time, uh, and I kept one on one time, and uh, <laughs> so I only had one at the time, now I have his, um, the ones that haven't utterly fallen apart. But he would always just select one uh, from a different time and put that on. Um, he had, he had collected a lot more than, than I have collected so far. I tend to be pretty happy with one for many years. Papa, a uh, really, um, you know, gosh, he was in no sense like a dandy, but he loved those hats and, and uh, uh, was always happy to find a new one that suited him. And they all suited him. Uh, anyway, so as, as partly as a tribute to him, but of course, why did, why did he wear it? Well, he was part of a generation uh, born in, in 1925, right? The greatest generation. Um, uh, U.S. Army Air Corps. Uh, Pacific Theater. He flew a P-38 Lightning. And, uh, you know, it's not just that generation because, of course, it wasn't a common sight outside of, uh, outside of the Mountain West and, and I, I guess, Texas um, uh, in, in his day either. Um, and he got all around the country as, as part of his, his Air Force days and then also later uh, his days as a mining engineer. Um, he always saw it as symbolic of three things that really mattered to him. And this was a man who, by the way, met both Clint Eastwood and John Wayne in person. Um, had uh, He and my grandma uh, have told me about wonderful conversations they had with both men. Um, so they, they kind of walked in that culture, that kind of Hollywood cowboy culture a little bit too. Um, which of course is an outgrowth of the real cowboy culture in some important ways. It's, it's a distortion of it in other important ways, but, but I digress. Anyway, to him it was symbolic of a place, right, of, of the American West. Uh, I think that the association with Texas exclusively is a little bit of a, a, an unfortunate uh, thing that's come about just because you know, people slangily throw around the term Tex for somebody who dresses that way. Um, 
But in fact, I would say that you won't see a whole lot of that in Texas outside of West Texas and, um, and certain pockets of East Texas. I would say as a percentage of people wearing cowboy hats, if you count West Texas, like west of Austin and San Antonio, as a separate state from East Texas, yes, that might be your highest per capita cowboy hat state. But Texas is diluted by its metro areas, so I think you would actually find higher per capita cowboy hats by far in Wyoming. And then uh, Colorado is diluted by its metro areas too, but if you exclude uh, uh, Denver, Boulder, probably not even Colorado Springs, uh, you would have a pretty high per capita in Colorado and places like Montana and Utah and Idaho and New Mexico and Arizona. Um, the western part of North and South Dakota, the eastern part of Washington, Oregon, the beleaguered eastern part of California, etc. Uh, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, parts of those states. Uh, so it's symbolic of that place and, and of the values of that place. And to him, there were two values in particular that mattered the most. Um, Papa was always talking about the code of the West, which he never defined. Uh, I've rarely seen anyone define it in any way that I think everyone would agree upon. But to him, the two biggest things were honesty. You were a man who could be trusted um, at, at least as far uh, as it mattered with, uh, with, with, with things where life and death were concerned, with things where money was concerned, with things with, with property was concerned. Um, you know, he was not an obsessive truth teller uh, <laughs> in the way that I think people sometimes take that to mean, but, uh, but highly valued honesty, and there was nothing that would get you on his bad side more than lying to him. And, I, and, and to him, that was one of the most important Western values. And the other one was individualism, um, by which he understood uh, self-reliance uh, most importantly, uh, but also the expression of an individual spirit um, being more important than the um, uh, conformity of that individual spirit to any particular uh, collective idea. Now, you could say the Code of the West is kind of a collective idea, but it's a collective idea of individualism, I suppose. So, you know, you can only take human ideology so far before you can find all kinds of semantic problems with it, right? So, give me a break. Give him a break. Give us a break, whatever. So, there's... I think that that, that that was a big part of that symbolism for him. He was also a man who was regarded as, as uh, you know, pretty ruggedly handsome in, in his day. And uh, I think that was part of his charm. I, I don't pretend to the same charm as, as he had or as my father has or, or my brother has. Um, but I mean that it's part of that sort of like, uh, uh, this is the sort of man I am. It's this sort of conception of... Of masculinity, and I know that's a, a dirty word now. Uh, you know, screw it. I mean, it is a conception of masculinity of the role of a man uh, as as uh, as a tougher thing that I think men often try to be today. And that's not me judging anyone who doesn't want to follow that cultural ideal. It's just a cultural ideal that I personally choose to follow. Um. So you know, as someone who grew up strongly influenced by Papa, um, I imitated him uh, for really all of my life, aside from a really bad phase that followed a terrible head injury. I will probably make another Ranch Porch video about that because I think people need to take concussions more seriously than they do. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I, he was always sort of my, my model uh, for life and um, so obviously, you know, I was going to, to, to dress similarly to him. Uh, I talk similarly to him. Actually, uh, a lot of the things that I say, or a lot of the ways that I say things, are more like the way that he and my grandma talk than the way that either of my parents talk. Partly because during the really critical period of my, my childhood, I was spending, a, a, frankly, more elapsed time with my grandparents, but also because I, they were my models more than my parents were for for what to be as an adult. Um, and uh, so, uh, for instance, the way people make fun of me for saying, you know, which and, and whether and, and, and where and when, uh, that sort of thing, uh, they did that. My father's generation, uh, Papa's kids, uh, don't do that. 
So that kind of skipped a generation to me. Uh, whether I actually pick that up unconsciously or at some point notice that I would have to have been a pretty young kid uh, and, and imitated it, I don't know. I digress. I'm talking about him more than about cowboy hats. But he is why the hats matter to me. And when I'm driving around some country road in the West and uh, I pass another man in a cowboy hat, I know that there's something we share, some kind of bond. We'll probably never speak of it. It would be weird to speak of it. But I know I can wave at this guy, not if he's on a horse, but you know, I can give some kind of nod or greeting and that there is some kind of shared cultural value there. An emphasis on independent living, an emphasis on, on I think, an honest relationship with the earth, neither, uh, n neither what one might call environmentalist, maybe, maybe conservationist is, is a better word. Uh, Jeffers, for instance, I think is a conservationist, not, a, not an environmentalist. Um, an emphasis on just, just that, that honest individualism and that love for the land um, uh, that Papa had. To me, that's what a cowboy hat is. Now, my own personal favorite hats, uh, recently, very recently, I actually finally bought a black hat. Um, I, um, uh, I, I had kind of resisted it for a long time because I have black hair and tend to wear a lot of black clothes. And I thought that it might push me a little bit too far toward looking like the bad guy in a Western if I had a black hat too. I don't know. I don't know what people think in, in, in those archetypes anymore. But this is my first black hat. I've actually really enjoyed it. Uh, this is a resist all. It's a 6X. This is actually from the George Strait collection. It is uh, uh, the Keen, I think is what it's called. K-E-E-N-E. -E -E. All of these hats have, have names for the models, just like cars. Um, and then my favorite uh, for, for many years before that, and still a strong favorite has been uh, this Stetson. This is a Marshall. Uh, it is named for and partially styled after the hat of Marshall Raylan Givens in the show. Justified, although it's not identical. It's actually um, more of a traditional cowboy hat shape than his. His is kind of halfway to a fedora. Um, but it's got that ranch tan color that I really like and this uh, uh, leather band uh, with the kind of belt detail that I, I don't know, I, I, I dig that. One thing about both these hats, is, as far as my tastes go, uh, I like about a four, four and a quarter inch brim. I don't like much longer than that. It starts looking like kind of a goofy movie, 10 gallon hat. And, you know, same deal with the, uh, uh, with the crown. I don't like much more than a four inch crown. I, I, I like a hat that's not, not too overstated, you know, especially because I, I often run in more urban environments. I don't want to uh, look like I'm, I'm dressing that way to get a reaction. Um, and I think mostly I, I don't outside of, again, places like Berkeley or Boulder where you're going to get made fun of for anything. Um, and um, as far as uh, care for them goes, uh, it really don't take much. They'll last for years. Uh, I had one that went 20 years, about 20 years, without uh, uh, even developing a hole and then finally just completely fell apart like a wrecked car. Uh, that was a Stetson. Um, you know, I brush them. I have, I have a brush, a uh, different one for the different colors so they don't swap hairs. Um, I have a stretcher. So if when I first get a hat, because I have kind of a longer oval-ish shape head than most, uh, I, I stretch it out a little bit to, to, to fit my head a little bit better. A day or so of stretching tends to, tends to make it fine. Um, you know, you can get like stiffeners, typically like this alcohol based spray, I think that you spray on them if they get wet and they start to droop and you can kind of reshape it. Uh, most Western stores, including most uh, boot barn outlets will actually reshape one completely for you. So uh, if, it, if it gets out of shape. So it's really not that hard to take care of. And um, I'll conclude with a thought from my good friend, uh, Faith Ingerson. Uh, who is old Wyoming stock up around Sheridan, Wyoming. Um, in response to someone who said, why would I wear a cowboy hat when I don't raise cattle? She said, 
why are you wearing a baseball cap when you don't play for the for the Rockies, right? <laughs> so, and I say, yeah, that's about right. It means a lot more than that you actually perhaps run cattle. Well, I hope this has been a uh, uh, something like fun, something like informative look at cowboy hats and my feelings about them. And uh, which one of these am I going to tip at you? I'll use this one. For now, from beautiful Colorado, I'm wishing you all the best. Mm -hmm.